Souls Meeting Room. The Soul Society is a great place where the souls of the deceased would stop if they were rescued by a shinigami. The place looked like a city of the feudal age of ancient Japan. The Ryokan district was the place where souls who were not escorted by a reaper ended up, and usually lived in conditions of poverty and rejection by the Suridal. And on the other hand, there was the fortress of the Suridal where all the harvesters lived, and trained to fight against the hollow, this place, no matter how beautiful it seemed, was not exempt from having the problems of society such as discrimination either by power or by your social class. In the place were the 13 divisions of the Shinigami, from the Espionage and Punishment Corps, the research laboratories, or the hospital, each supervised by their respective captain and subordinates however, none of the captains was at this time in their position since an important meeting was taking place that would decide the fate of the Shinigami Rangaku and Rukia. In the large meeting room, all the captains with their lieutenants were seen in two rows of six, while the captain commander was above them, and in the middle of all were the accused. The first of all of them was Captain Yamamoto, the oldest in the Society of Souls, and thus as his title said, the strongest, his appearance, was that of an old man over 85 years old, he was bald but, with a big white beard, he had a serious face, while he was leaning on his cane looking at the girls, behind him was his lieutenant, who looked like a French swordsman with a strange hairstyle and a thin mustache. The next one was the captain of the second division, of the body of punishment and espionage, Soi Fan, who was a woman of a small height similar to a teenager of 14, although she was older than she seemed. She had a serious face and short black hair accompanied by two long braids, her lieutenant was a tall man with a strange hairstyle who only focused on eating a bag of fries. Then Captain Jin Chimaru followed, a strange guy who was always smiling and with his eyes closed. This subject with short white hair was an acquaintance of Captain Azen when they were lieutenants, and behind him was his lieutenant Izumo Kuro boy with a tired look and blonde hair that covered one of his eyes. The next one was the captain of the 4th Division, who was in charge of the medical part, Yachiru Anahara woman with a long black hair who had a braid that covered her neck. Despite appearing to be a Sweet and kind woman, deep inside she was a complete crazy addict to fights like a certain Saiyan. She was accompanied by a white-haired girl, and calm look named Isane. Then there was Captain Azen, a genius prodigy whose intelligence was only surpassed by that of Urahara. This type of calm look, with glasses and fallen brown hair knew how to keep appearances. Next to him was a girl with brown hair gathered in a bun with a tender look. She responded to the simple name of Momo. The next one was a large captain whose face was covered by a Templar knight's helmet of the Crusades on his head, his name was Sajin Kamamura, and his lieutenant was a type of black hair that looked like it, was taken out of the men in black movie. Then followed Komamura's best friend Captain Kaname Tausen who despite being blind managed to be captain by his powers, his lieutenant was a black-haired subject with a couple of scars, and a number on his face. On the list of captains followed Captain Toshiro Hitsugea, the youngest of all, this boy with white hair, and light blue eyes, despite his young age he managed to get far, although he looked always calm now he was upset, because his lieutenant Rangaku Matsumoto was in a trial, and she did not take him seriously, followed by Captain Bayakuya and his lieutenant Renji, like everyone else, was waiting for the trial to begin, the next one had the face of a madman, and a very strange head, he was a man of robust completion with totally white skin and his long nails that were painted, at no time did he stop smiling as if he were a relative of the Joker. This guy was Captain Myuri of the investigative body with his lieutenant Nimu, who was a beautiful girl with long brown hair. Then followed a captain who on his white robe wore a pink mantle with a flower design and wearing a straw hat like a samurai. He had straight brown hair and a tired face. This guy was Captain Kyoraku, Yamamoto's heir to take his place. Next to this was his lieutenant Nanao who had black hair tied and wearing glasses that made her look like a secretary. Kyoraku's friend, Captain Yukatake, was also at the meeting despite not being in good health, he had long white hair and a tired face. And finally Captain Kempichi Zeraki, this guy with his black hair on ends, a patch that contained his power, and his crazy look gave him the reputation of being the only Shinigami who is captain without ever having released his Benkei or Shikei because he was incapable but that defect compensated him with his devastating brute force, and he was always accompanied by his loyal lolly lieutenant Yachiru who was a very cheerful little girl with pink hair who always traveled on his back. With all the captains and lieutenants gathered in the room, the fate of Rangaku and Rukia was about to be decided, who were extremely calm because they had everything calculated. Attention captains, 
This meeting is held because one of them committed the crime of ceding their powers to a Ryoka, their sentence is being decided by the Center 46, but I still want to hear what they have to say. Yamamoto said making everyone have looks either of anger and surprise. Well one day I said that Rukia was ready to go alone to a hunt, that happened, I found her in her jige, without her powers telling me that she gave her powers to a human, because he was going, to die, and that she was very tired of her fight against the hollow that attacked them. Rangaku said calmly, her whole story was completely false and everyone believed it, and why the hell didn't you say anything? asked Captain Soi Fong annoyed. For some reason, there was interference, and her power returned quickly, so I downplayed it and, I kept her trained until she happened again. The lieutenant said, bothering the more serious captains even more. Unacceptable, it can't be so irresponsible. Captain Towson shouted without Rangaku caring in the slightest. Rukia Kuchiki, do you deny that you did these things? I asked the Yamamoto that although his face didn't say anything inside, he was completely furious. No, everything Lieutenant Matsumoto said is true. I gave up my powers twice, I did it to fulfill my job, and those substitutes trained and promised to take my place without complaints. She calmly said the black movie that she had her hands tied, and wearing only a white kimono. The story of both produced different reactions. Toshiro is angry with his lieutenant, who although he was irresponsible and lazy he had crossed the line with that, Kyoraku and Yukitake thought that the girl only did her job, and that the punishment would be something unfair. Tazaraki, Kamamura, Anoraha, Aizen, and Jin did not seem to import this while the rest were so angry about the actions committed, and that they did not care at all. Among the lieutenants, Momo, Renji, and Kira were worried about Rukia. Although what she did was not bad, they knew that she would never do things without thinking because they knew her for a long time, while the rest of the lieutenants did not seem to care much to them. Suddenly, a black butterfly appeared in the place, and it stood on one of Yamamoto's fingers. The insect began to command you the sentence of both for their actions, and was ready to make the news public. Well, by orders of the Center 46 Rukia Kuchiki will be executed within three weeks with the Sokiku for what she did. You will be locked in a place where your spiritual pressure cannot be felt in addition to being sealed your power. Until the cell for confinement this list you will be in the normal prison. I finish saying Yamamoto surprising everyone by such a sentence. This is bad, but anyway, I will tell Rukia what I feel before they lock her up. Renji thought it was time to reveal his crush on the little Shinigami. Lieutenant Rangaku Matsumoto for his complete disinterest and irresponsibility, will be degraded from his position, and will be under constant surveillance of his captain until the center decides what to do finish saying the old captain. Okay, anyway, I realize that this title is very boring. The now former lieutenant said as she took off her badge, and gave it to her captain without realizing that between the folds of her robe her engagement ring was silence that was seen by Momo who was surprised and wanted to ask many questions to the orange movie. They forgive your life, and you are still so calm, you are a corlito head. He thought a very angry Toshiro who was just waiting for the meeting to end to scold his former lieutenant as he had never done before. For her part, Rukia had a few words to say before being locked up, and found the perfect moment. Whatever I say now, nothing will change my execution? Asked the little Shinigami. Say anything now, but nothing will change said the old commander. In that case I will tell you some things that I had reserved for you plus a warning. Rukia said, then say it, said a quiet by Akuaya. Well brother, first of all I want to tell you that you are the worst brother of all, you never care about me even now, Captain Soifong you will always be single because you are too bitter for someone. To tolerate her, Captain Anahara, I think you and Captain Zeraki would look good together, Kamamura sama I don't know why you cover your head if you look very good behind the helmet, Kyoraku, you will always be single if you. Keep harassing the girls Mr. Yamamoto you are an old rabies shell, Captain Kempachi. I think I found a friend with whom has many things in common, and Momo, always consider you my best friend. Finish saying Rukia. Before continuing with what she had to say she looks at everyone's reactions, Yamamoto, was furious, at the lack of respect for his person, Soi, Fong had a vein of annoyance, while his lieutenant held her so that he did, not hit the girl, Bayakuaya did not say anything, although inside Rukia's words heard him, Kamamura was happy for the compliment, just like Momo, Anahara blushed, Kyoraku, was with a black cloud of depression making circles on the floor while, Yukitake tried to cheer him up while Kempachi had a wild smile, hoping to meet the person that Rukia mentioned and Rangaku, only put up with the urge to laugh. Before I leave I will tell you that I learned that there are hollows who are different, they have a heart and no desire to kill for no reason, finally, 
The reason why I am calm is, because I know, that I will be saved by the same Ryoka to whom I gave my powers, son Gohan, my boyfriend. Rukia said blushing for remembering the minor Saiyan, those last statements were something that no one expected, and they could only be completely amazed, but of all these the most surprised was Renji who upon hearing the word boyfriend was completely paralyzed, with his jaw very open and pale, like a ghost. Renji, shut your mouth that you will swallow a fly. Kira said that she went to see her friend. I think he won't listen to you. He's paralyzed by the surprise. Momo said as he ran his hand through the eyes of the redhead who did not blink. They could get him out of here. It's uncomfortable to have him with that face here. Said an annoying by Akira. Of course, Captain Azen and Jin, with your permission. Momo said as he took Renji's legs to carry him, while Izumo grabbed him by the head carrying him between the two like a sack of potatoes. Surely he will wake up, think it was a dream, and when he buried himself from the truth, he will become depressed putting himself in a fetal position crying in his room. Both lieutenants thought with a drop of sweat on their foreheads visualizing the future of their friend. The meeting has been concluded, you can return to your daily activities, Yamamoto said calmly although inside he wanted to hit Rukia with his cane for his lack of respect. All the captains dispersed in their own ways. But Toshiro before scolding his former lieutenant heard a conversation between Jin and Aizen that made him understand that they were plotting something big and not exactly good. But since he had nothing to incriminate them with and he only focused on the carefree, orange-haired, that only whistled in a tone of I do not care. Rangaku, do you have any idea what you did? Well the truth is that no, I only trained the girl, which for your information is so strong to kick your ass boy. It's not the time for your stupid things because of you someone innocent will be executed, and to top it off you don't care about that, or the fact that they took away a title for which many would kill. The annoyed captain said that he was getting tired of the woman's attitude. Well if I'm worried about my little apprentice, but I have everything fixed, and as for the other, I'm no longer interested in that position that only involves giving orders and paperwork. Rangiku said knowing that that was one of the things she wouldn't miss about being a lieutenant, but the one who has to do the paperwork is me. And the worst thing, is that I have to be glued to you for a while, until I tell them that I need another lieutenant. The little captain said with a sigh of tiredness, don't worry, you will only have to put up with me for a week, and then you won't hear from me again, because I will be very happy somewhere else, said the former lieutenant imagining her, and Goku at the altar in their wedding clothes. The silly look of her confused Toshiro, who only resigned himself to having to put up with it, but did not stop thinking about the fact that Rangaku, and Rukia's Ryayatsu, was higher than normal, or that they had a second energy signature, for him alone it was something isolated, or his imagination so he let it go. A week away from my fiancé, I will be very lonely but when I arrive I will have a very special surprise, and this dwarf who is no longer my boss, will not stop me. Rangaku thought having for a few moments the mentality of a yander, while with Renji, the redhead woke up suddenly in his bed that was in the area of his squad wondering how he got to that place and having a severe headache as if he had fallen head-on on a ladder. Without understanding anything, the young man walked to be outside where there was a nervous Izumo and Momo who laughed at something they did. How lucky that he was unconscious, and didn't remember that, they both thought remembering how the redhead slipped out of their hands causing a painful fall against some stairs. Hello guys, I had the weirdest of dreams, I dreamed that Rukia had a boyfriend named Gohan, and that he was going to execute her. Renji said rubbing his eyes, but Renji, that wasn't a dream those two things really happened, only that you fainted when she said she had a boyfriend, then we carried you here because you were paralyzed with a silly face. Momo said with a face of concern, what? Renji screamed almost fainting again, but was arrested by Izumo so that that did not happen. Well if you apologize, I must give Rangaku something that she dropped during the meeting goodbye. Momo said saying goodbye to Kira and Renji, although the latter was in a fetal position crying comically, and with a black cloud on him, whoever you are Gohan, I will make you pay for taking Rukia from me and for condemning her to this fate. Renji thought imagining himself with his Zabimaru defeated the sun. While in the human world, Yurai told them what he saw to the sun about how the Shinigami took the girls, but they told him that they already knew it and that they would go for them in a week to follow the plan that was created throughout the year. This surprised Quincy, who said he wanted to go to the Society of Souls, something that Yuruchi allowed, because she saw the possibility, that Black Haired asked for that and created a scenario where he participated. And returning to the present, Gohan was in the corridors of the school being embraced in both arms by Oraheim and Tatsuki until, Achoo! sneezed the young son suddenly. What's up Gohan? Do you catch a cold? 
Asked Doraheim worried about her boyfriend's health. It's nothing, I'm fine. Although I think someone is speaking badly of me somewhere. Sun said nervously. Well, then I'll hit that someone for talking bad about my boyfriend. Tatsuki said in a determined way, while in the Soul Society Renji came out of his depression temporarily only to feel a strong chill in his body as if he had made the wrong person angry. And returning to the Society of Souls. Rangiku still kept her room as a lieutenant, until she reacted to it, but this didn't matter too much to her. But what bothered her, was that in less than a few minutes, she already felt harassed by the follow-up order. Her thoughts were interrupted by Lieutenant Momo who approached, and wanted to talk to her. Oh, hello Momo-chan, how can I help you? Asked the orange-haired with her usual cheerful attitude. Well, I have something to give you back, and ask you some questions in private, the chestnut said. I'm afraid it won't be possible, because I have orders to follow her everywhere, Toshiro said. But it's important in addition to being a women's issue. Couldn't you make an exception for now Toshiro? Momo asked, but the captain wasn't going to give in. No, I must follow Yamamoto's orders, I'm sorry. The captain apologized to the lieutenant without knowing that Rangaku found a way to have privacy. Don't worry Momo-chan, I know a place where this dwarf can't bother or listen to us. Rangaku said laughing. That's impossible, there's no place I can't enter, said a confident Toshiro. Really? Then let's go. Momo said cheerfully knowing the place. Minutes later. You win this time Rangaku? He thought an annoying Toshiro waiting outside the women's bathroom. The only place a man could not enter without ending up marked as a pervert afterwards. Rangaku, I'm happy for you. Even if they took your position away, I'm happy for you. Momo said with a cheerful smile. What do you mean? Asked the former lieutenant while with her hands she was looking for something in the pockets of her clothes. You are going to get married? The lieutenant chestnut said, returning the ring to a red Rangaku. This one dot? Well dot. Yes. I'm going to marry the most affectionate, strong, handsome, and kind man I've ever met. Said the orange-haired began to enter one of her fantasies with the Saiyan. Wow, and is it someone I know? You know, to congratulate him too. Momo said although inside she didn't know who that man would be because all the adult shinigamists she knew did not comply with the former lieutenant's description. I'll just tell you to wait a week, and you may know him. Also his son with whom I think you fell in love, because of his innocence he he. Rangiku laughed now imagining another girl for Gohan's heart. None said anything about it and they only went their own ways without realizing that a small intruder heard everything they said although she didn't care, and wouldn't say anything. Wow, I wonder if Rangaku's fiancé is Kenny's possible friend. A cheerful Yacharu said that she left the bathroom between jumps of joy pretending that she don't hear anything. A week later, in the basement of Urahara, the time period that was established to make the plan was fulfilled. And during that week all those who would go for Rukia to the Society of Souls prepared for everything by training hard, even Yurayu, who increased his power, considerably but not to live up to his companions who trained for a whole year. Those who were going to go were, Goku, with his broken Shinigami clothes along with, Orange Daji, Gohan who imitating his father also broke his suit to leave Piccolo's purple Daji more exposed, Yuruchi in her cat shape, but with, a small backpack where she had clothes to put on, Haribel with her basic pull-off suit, Orheim, who wore a red shirt with baggy jeans to run, Chad wore a simple white t-shirt with red marks and black pants, Taki, only wore her school uniform of skirt and shirt and finally there was Yurayu who wore strange clothes that made him look like a priest dressed in blue and white. Haribel told her friends that they would stay to take care of the city in her absence, and despite the complaints of the tarts they accepted, and then wished the best of luck to their maternal figure. Are you ready? Asked Gohan by adjusting his sword and raising his fist with enthusiasm. Yisei. They all said to the unison as if they were a squad ready for battle. Then on the move. Said the sun miner going all to the door of the Cyrodiil that Urahara had prepared. Little did our heroes know that something unexpected was going to happen. And that he could leave everyone in check if he was released. 